This is the MV-22 Osprey. It's been developed by Miltech Simulations for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We're on the deck of an amphibious carrier just off the coast of San Diego. So we can have a look at this unique aircraft and explore some of its features and functions. It may look like a Chinook and an A-10 Warthog had a baby, but the Osprey is considered to be one of the most capable helicopters ever produced. But it's not quite a helicopter and it's not quite a plane either. The Osprey is a tilt rotor aircraft. The rotors are mounted on the cells at the ends of the wings, and these nacelles can tilt upwards to take off and land like a helicopter, straight forward to fly like a turboprop plane, or sit somewhere in between for when a slow speed flight is required. Now we know what the Osprey is, let's take a look inside. First things first, power. You'll find the battery button on the overhead panel. Next, turn on the APU by rotating it clockwise. Now we have power, we can turn on the CDU and start configuring the aircraft. With the APU running, Hyde 3 has started to spool up. It must turn green before we can rotate the nacelles. Next, let's look at the aircraft initialization menu. Press the CDU button and then aircraft init. Then press the menu button twice. From here, we can remove the PTO engine cover. That's these red bits. And if you're finding the aircraft a bit challenging to handle, you can change the reality setting. There's also a reset fail button, just in case you manage to break anything. Next, let's set up the lights. Feel free to go ahead and configure these how you see fit. Now our Hyde 3 has gone green, we can rotate the nacelles. You'll see there's an error message that says key bind cal flaps 4 to operate nacelles. You need to set this binding up in the controls menu, and it's worth creating a dedicated profile for the Osprey. Once the bindings are set up, you can clear the error just by pressing the buttons down to increase and decrease. Next, let's switch on the MFDs. By default, left is navigation, and right is your primary flight display. If we try to start the engine now, nothing will happen. This is because currently, the nacelles are in the airplane configuration. If I start the engine now, the props would strike the deck, and then we wouldn't be going anywhere. Before the engine can start, the nacelles need to be at at least 60 degrees. So let's rotate them now. Press your cow flap 4 increase button to start tilting the nacelles upwards. Ideally they should be at 90 degrees for startup. But before we start the engine, I want to show you one of the features that Miltech have included that I really like in this aircraft. On one of your MFDs, press the SYST button. Next, press BFWS. This will bring up the screen for folding the wings. Now, the Osprey is quite big, and with the wings out, it takes up quite a lot of space on the deck of a carrier. To fold the wings, press the full stow button. This will start the folding process, and an arrow will blink on rotor lock. Simply press the rotor lock button to continue. Then sit back and enjoy the show. Press flight ready to return to flight configuration. That always makes me think of Thunderbirds, but then, maybe I'm showing my age. We'll wait for the sequence to complete, and then we'll carry on. We also have switches on the overhead panel to open and close the doors. We can control the side door. As well as the ramp at the rear of the aircraft.
where we have plenty of seating for passengers. There's also a door mode switch which has two options, manual and auto. On auto, the door should open automatically when you land and close when you take off. But that sounds kind of complicated, so I'm going to leave it on manual. And close the doors again, because flying with doors open is rarely a good idea. As I pitch forwards and back, notice how it tilts the rotors as well as the elevator. Also notice it's tilting the rotors but not the nacelles. Likewise when banking left and right the aerolons and rotors work together. And when I use the pedals the rudders move and the rotors pitch in opposite directions. And increasing the throttle increases the pitch on the rotor blades too. Having the rotors and flight control services work together like this means that the controls are effective whether you're in flight mode or hover mode. But now I think it's time to start the engines. Start by moving one of the engine control levers into the start position. You can see the NG and PSI gauge is starting to build up. We need to let them get into the green before we can move the control lever into the fly position. And now we're ready to start the second engine. The process is exactly the same. As for which engine to start first, well that normally depends on wind direction. Typically you start the downwind engine first, to prevent the exhaust gas from the first engine you start choking up the second engine. I don't know if that's been modelled here, but it's good practice to get into. However, today the wind is calm, so it's not too much of an issue. Now both engines are running and the generators are going, we can turn off the APU. To switch the MFD back to the primary flight display, just press the PFD button. Let's take a quick look at the PFD, because you're going to be using it a lot. This is on a cell angle, and it's very important you always keep the green arrow inside the green zone. If it slips into the red, you're in trouble. And this is your engine power. If it gets into the yellow or the red and stays there for too long, you will have an engine failure. And will also be in trouble. And this is your vertical speed indicator. The red segment appears when your airspeed gets below a certain speed. And if you get too far into the red section, well, you can guess what happens. And this is your radar altimeter, which is very useful for those vertical landings. And the rest is fairly standard stuff. You've got your airspeed, your altimeter, your bank angle, and your bearing. All the usual stuff you'd expect to find on your primary flight display. So it looks like we're ready to fly, and we will do in part two. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you enjoyed this, please go ahead and hit like. And if you want to see me reviewing a slightly smaller helicopter, which I do actually fly, then click this card right here.